Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for tuning in to what is going to be the mother of all favorites videos. Rather than doing a December favorites, I thought I would just go ahead and do a full 2017 favorite beauty products recap. Take a look back at the year as a whole and see what products I loved and used over the course of a longer period of time, as well as use them in a look. Most products in my favorites anyway, I am wearing today and you'll see in a demo throughout this video. I don't have favorites in some categories like brows for instance, I am trying something new today, so I don't show that on camera. And it's kind of the same as last year's favorites video where I didn't have a favorite in every category. So instead of forcing a fit, like I used a lot of brow products, but all of them were pretty much equal in my eyes. Like I love them all, but no one stuck out as being like the one brow product for me. And so rather than force a fit, I just figured we wait, wait till next year to see if one came out ahead of the others. I'm also not talking about foundation in this video because I had so many loves for the year 2017 that they deserve their own video. So that will be coming later as well. But don't worry, we still have a lot of products to get through. So let's go ahead and dive in. So since we're not talking foundation, let's go ahead and skip to concealer. The first half of the year was pretty dominated by one that I feel like is a cult classic here on YouTube. It is the Tarte Shape Tape. This and mine is the shade Light Neutral. It's an amazing full coverage concealer. I think we all pretty much know that it's full coverage, super blendable, very, very creamy, but something that some people run into is creasing. It's a very hydrating and moisturizing concealer, so I think it's amazing for dry or mature skin, especially those who want a more full coverage. But if you don't set it with a powder or you go a little too heavy handed, it can cake and crease. Then later on in the year, I kind of discovered the counterpart to this guy. That is if you are looking for a full coverage concealer but might have oilier skin and find that this creases on on you. That is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Waterproof All Day Extreme Wear Concealer. This I applied to try from Octoly and I'm so glad I did because it ended up being one of my favorites. I mean a sure rival to the Shape Tape. It is just as full coverage. You get a ton of product. For reference this is half a fluid ounce whereas in Shape Tape you get 0.33 fluid ounces. Like I said it's oh and my shade in Estee Lauder is 1C Light Cool. It's very full coverage but it does dry down to more of a powdery finish. So it is is truly for those that don't need to worry about extra moisture in their under eye area. I personally have combo skin, so this was right up my alley. And once it dries down, it lasts budge, cake, crease free, all stinking day. It is just such, I mean, it really lives up to the double wear name, right? I feel like so many of us think of Estee Lauder double wear and know it as the standard for long lasting full coverage makeup. And this really lives up to it. So in the event that you like Shape Tape, but struggle with creasing or didn't find that Shape Tape worked for you and you're looking for that alternative, I would go ahead and try this Estee Lauder. Now onto some face products. And I noticed a pattern throughout the year when I went back to look at the products that I was using like towards the beginning of 17 and how it progressed to now. I noticed that in the beginning of the year, I wasn't doing as much travel and I was trying more individual products in the way of like blush, bronzer, highlight, things like that. So I stuck with individual products that I could kind of swap in and out, like keep the same bronzer, highlighter, try a new blush and you know, vice versa or all those other permutations. So these were the three core products that I really stuck to closely as I was swapping those out. Then later in the year, I found that I was traveling more or just trying more palettes. And so I stuck closer to all-in-one face palettes, which I think you'll be able to see and probably remember from me talking about them so stinking much in more recent videos. So the three individual products that I used towards the beginning of the year were, let's go ahead and start with bronzer. Um, this is the Butter Bronzer from Positions Formula. Again, I feel like another cult classic here on YouTube. Mine is in the shade Light Bronzer and they have just broadened the shade range. I believe there were only two shades now and they've had it, they've added a deeper shade to this as well. This is well used, well loved. My texture is almost all the way gone from this guy because I've used so stinking much. It has a lightly satin texture Texture. I would call it borderline matte, but I know a lot of people are very picky with exactly how matte they like their bronzers. So for the sake of being specific, it has a light satin finish, but it is so not at all shimmery. It's satin in a way that's flattering to your skin's texture. It doesn't feel like a harsh matte powder, one that's harder to work with across your skin. This is true to its name, like butter as you smooth it across your skin. And it was just one of those that I found was a no brainer for me to reach for when I like wasn't sure, oh, do I try something new? Do I want something trusty? This was always 
the trusty contour slash bronzer that I reached for. The blush that I reached for is one from Essence. It's one of their Satin Touch blushes. And this one took me by surprise because it really, I just didn't think it was gonna show up as much on my skin. This is in the shade Satin Coral number 10. And it too has kind of a satin-ish matte finish, which I personally like because if I keep my blush and bronzer slash contour matte, it, it may, I feel like I can go a little bit more heavy handed and precise with my highlighter. As a shade, not only is the texture of this powder so, so smooth that it really just lays nicely over anything, no matter what kind of skin texture I might have, if it's a breakout or if it's some dryness, it laid beautifully over everything. And it also was just a shade such that it shows up on my cheeks, but it just looks like a healthy flush of color and a shade that matched whatever eye look I was trying. Like if I was trying a new shadow or I was trying a brighter shadow or trying a bolder lip, this I think tended to be the blush that I gravitated towards because it was my, it's almost like a your cheeks but better shade. I don't think that's a thing, but I think we should make it a thing because that's exactly what it was. It was like, it adds that hint of color to your cheeks without being like overtly blush. You know, it wasn't like, wow, that's, that's some blush on your cheeks. It was just like a light, natural flush of color. That's what this shade and this blush is for me. And the last individual face powder is the highlight. And while the other two are drugstore, this is not so much. This is from Dior and it is the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer in the shade 03, which is this gorgeous golden shade. I think there are three within this collection, but this is just mm, the one for me. This is another one where I applied to try it through Octoly and it was love at first swatch. I mean, it is so finely milled that it can be worn as a sheer wash. It can be layered up to this high shine metallic finish wherever you wanna wear it, whether it is your eyes, your cheeks, on your collarbone. It wears so beautifully everywhere wear and it doesn't make you look like a giant disco ball. And just in general, this is a shade that on my skin tone, I feel like is very natural looking and flattering. Then onto the face palettes that I liked, first of which is actually one that I discovered in 2016. This I also ordered from Octoly too, now that I think about it. It's the Rimmel London Kate contour or Kate sculpting palette. I don't know. They don't actually put the name on here, but the shade selection is Coral Glow. And this for me, again, kind of for the, the individual products that I just mentioned, I love it for all of those reasons too. The contour is very satiny. It's a little more satiny shimmery than the butter bronzer from Physicians Formula, but once you actually apply it to the cheeks, it's so subtly shimmery that it really is more of a satin and it just blurs out any texture. It's so, so flattering to the skin and it's just personally a flattering shade on me. This blush uh, is very, very similar to that essence as well and in that it's kind of a your cheeks but better. I do have to work a little bit harder to get the pigment out of this guy in comparison to the essence, but it's still one of those goes with everything sort of blush, which is another reason why I reach for this. And then the highlight here is a softer, more pearlescent highlight. I have less of a dent in this because I am personally a fan of like a really in your face sort of highlight. So sometimes I will reach for something else to supplement that like the Dior, but it is really beautiful. It's like a soft shimmery opalescent kind of thing. Very subtle. You can build it to get something a little bit more intense, but it's not quite blinding enough. So while it is beautiful and it complements these other two shades here, I do tend to reach for something else, but altogether they make a beautiful, all-in-one face and it's super compact which has made it super travel friendly for me. The last face palette is not as travel friendly but it just knocked my socks off when I tried it and it's from, in fact I think I just mentioned it in an underrated brands and products video, um, but it's from Adept Cosmetics. It's their magnetic face and cheek palette and the Rimmel has a pretty limited range of skin tones that is going to flatter. It's the perfect shade for me. There isn't a wide range of shade selections within that specific collection whereas this from Adept is insanely pigmented. You have two choices of matte bronzers or matte contours. One is cooler, one is warmer. This blush right here, which I feel like never comes across as intense on camera as it is in person, but hopefully the swatch does it justice. And then the highlight, which this is one that I, when I use this palette, I use this highlight because it is a glow to the gods kind of highlight. It is just one of those all in one. I think it's gonna be far more versatile across a wider range of skin tones. And you get so, so much product for the actual price of the palette. Yes, it's less portable, takes up a little bit more room, but I think it just is going to satisfy so many more skin tones and makeup preferences out there. Next, let's move on to eyes. First up, 
up was the palette that just stuck by my side through pretty much the first half of the year. It is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. Pretty sure this was a favorite in 2016 as well, and for good reason. I mean, it's just, this is my color wheelhouse. I love it. I've hit pan on what is this shade, Primavera. It's well-loved, well-used. It just does everything so, so right for me from the mixture of colors and textures and finishes. I just love it because it's something that I could reach for on an everyday sort of basis if I just wanted kind of a neutral leaning brown tone look, but then I could also spice it up with some of those berries and this burnt orange over here if I just wanted to add it a hint of something else. Absolutely love it. And again, it is what I am wearing today, but one that I discovered later in the year, only because it only recently came out later in the year, is the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. And as I held these two side by side, as I was doing my makeup here today, I realized they are pretty similar in, in their color palettes. So it really is no wonder that of all the pal palettes that I have and tried this year, these are the two that I love because they are all in the same beautiful berry tone family. The one thing about the Desert Dusk though is it comes with an even wider range of finishes and textures because you not only have the mattes, but you also have shimmers and glitters and duochromes. And it's just a broader range of shades within their too because it mixes not only the neutrals, the browns, you have a little bit of the berry, some rust, but then it also throws in those pops of purples and then those purples land in the duochromes that have kind of a bluey turquoise shift and it just adds a lot more complexity to a look. So in today's eye makeup look, I not only, I kind of used the Modern Renaissance as my base and then I went in with some of these more fun colors like Retrograde and Nefertiti used on a dampened brush. I just sprayed some Max Fix Plus to it and popped that right on the center of my lid to just give it that strong duochrome shift. But yeah, these have pretty much been my jam. Mascara is kind of a hard one for me because I feel like the one I'm currently using is the best one and I do try and use the one consistently until it is completely used up just because they have such a short shelf life and I'm very, after having an eye infection from what I'm sure was old makeup, I have become very particular with how and when I use makeup and paying attention to when it gets old, especially on the eyes. So I feel like it's a little harder for me to judge mascaras because I currently really love the one that I'm using, which is the Monsieur Big from Lancome. And I'm really happy with it, using it every day not just because I want to kind of get through it, but because I really love how it lengthens and volumizes. But as I was thinking back to 2017 and the products that really surprised me, and again, that I used most consistently for the longest period of time, this is probably second only to one other mascara, and that is the Essence Lash Princess. This, uh, the False Lash Effect mascara, by the way, I think they have a couple of Lash, Lash Princess mascaras, but this one is the turquoisey one called False Lash Effect. I, I couldn't get over it because, first of all, it does do amazing thing is for my lashes. Compared to Lancome, I will say this is more of a lengthener. It does do a good job at volumizing, but the Lancome's a little bit stronger in the volumizing department, whereas the False Lash Effect Mascara gives you that just long, like, stiletto-looking lashes with a little bit of volume at the base. It does a decent job at curling and holding the curl, but my main concerns are length and volume, and this does exactly that, and it does it for so, so few pennies. I mean, it's so, such an affordable mascara that when I first used it, it was one of those where like my jaw dropped and then it was my favorite until I couldn't use it anymore. So yeah, this, the, I mean, these are, these two were my favorites, but the essence is really just the one that I think wowed me the most. Moving on to lips, which for the most part, I was kind of boring in this department. Um, maybe it's to do with the fact that the eye palettes that I loved and used so frequently were so bold. And so the natural pairing for me was to go this kind of natural glossy route. But either way, I have some fun pops of color, but for the most part, this is what I reached for. First of which is the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask. I have talked about this so much here on this channel. It is the most nourishing, most effective lip treatment, like hydrating, moisturizing lip treatment. I can put this on at night and my lips eat no matter how dry, cracked, textured they are. I wake up and they just feel so soft, so smooth, and so comfortable, which I can't say that for literally any other lip treatment that I've used. So I use this not just because it looks great, because it does have a hint of tint, a little bit of shimmer, but because it is so effective at making my lips look and feel good. But for the days that I want, this is kind of a frostier pink. It actually kind of mutes out some of the color in my lips. So when I want something that does a little less hiding and a little more amplifying, it's a little more peach leaning, whereas this is pink and has a little bit more shimmer, I go for the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb, right? That's what this is called. Yes, Gloss Bomb in the shade Fenty Glow. There's only one shade, so I don't know why that matters, but this, and this is what I'm wearing today. This, I feel, makes my lips look so full and so healthy. It does not really do much in the way of hydrating. I mean, it doesn't dehydrate my lips, but it certainly is no agave lip mask. But it's still, I mean, when my lips 
they don't have to be in the best of shape for me to apply this and it just smooths everything over and it's just like let's just not acknowledge that we have a little bit of something going on with your lips it's just smooths over it makes it look nice and pretty and glossy and healthy and plump and it goes with everything i mean both of these pretty much go with everything which again is why i love them now when i want to make a bold lip statement i have been going to some new finds for me in 2017 which are the maybelline lip inks. These things are insanely good. I think I first started off the re first review or the only review I have is when I just had this one shade. It's this gorgeous hot corally orange in heroin. Amazing shade, amazing lasting power. You really do need like a solid remover, like a set your makeup remover will not cut it. You need like an oil or a lip balm or something else to help remove this stuff because it is so, so effective at being a budge free lip stain that it, it will not move for anything. So that is what I loved in the summer. But then come the holidays, of course, I went for more of the red, specifically this guy, which is more of a true blue base, like what I think of as a holiday red um, pioneer here. This, I mean, I literally wore it to Andrew's Christmas party. I think I wore this on Christmas Eve. It has just like been my go-to festive lip color, especially because it lasts through the eating and drinking and like all the things that you're going to be doing over the holidays without moving. You don't have to touch it once. Once you put it on, it's there. Um, and then the other one that I have is a quite a bit more dramatic because even though it looks, oh, no, maybe it, maybe it's coming off well on camera, but it's called Voyager and it is this deep like crimsony ox blood. I mean, by comparison, this is Pioneer is more of a bright red, whereas this is just that gorgeous, deep, vampy red. Love this. And I think I'm going to get more good out of this come January when I'm feeling less festive and more like, ugh, it's winter. Are we ready for summer? I'm going to be, I'm going to put my moody lips on about it. You know, that just me? I don't know. But I love it. But yes, in summary, those have been my newfound favorite bold lip stain. All right, the last few things are not so much makeup. They are more so hair and skin and body care. Let's for starting with hair. I'm um, starting with my actual hair, which in case you didn't know, most of it is not mine. They are hair extensions. I have tape-ins and I have had them for probably going on a little over a year and a half at this point. One of you recently asked me for an update and while I don't, I don't have much more to say about them than what I did in my original video where I talked about the ins and outs, application, how long they last, the pricing, all that kind of stuff. I don't have a whole lot more to say about them besides the fact that I love them. I have gotten a longer length because my, my hair went from, you know, maybe being about this long to maybe even shorter than that, but it has grown so, so much since I've had these in. My hair, feels just as healthy as it ever has, like my natural hair whenever I have these removed. So I'm still loving that. I think the only new thing that has only made me love them more is that since moving, I moved from Austin to Dallas. It's kind of a big year, moved from Austin to Dallas. And when I found my new hairstylist here, he said that unlike what I had initially thought where the hair would only last about three refreshes, basically every eight to 10 weeks, you get your hair put in and then every eight to 10 weeks as your natural hair grows out, you have to have them retaped, basically taken out and then taped up close to the root. And I was under the impression that I had to get new hair every three refreshes essentially. So you might have what, like two to three new hair replacements every year which is not inexpensive. The hair is the most expensive part here. But with my newest hairstylist, he said that if a if your hair doesn't last a year, you're doing something wrong. So that has just made it all the better and more manageable and obviously more affordable. And so I, yeah, I've just really, really been loving them and would highly recommend them and highly recommend you check out that video that I did on them if you are curious um, about them. Then a product that I love to use on my hair, and I think I maybe bought five cans of this, not because I've gone through them all, but because I've every, every sale that supports has. I just like keep stocking up on it because I use it and love it so, so much. It is the Dry Bar Dry Shampoo for Brunettes. I mean, this is from the brand Dry Bar and I, I believe it's probably their same dry shampoo formula, but it just has a tint for brunettes. So it gives you some root cover, it covers your scalp if you have thinning hair, and it also does the job of a dry shampoo where it wicks away moisture so, so effectively. Um, one way that I find my extensions last as long as they do is if I can go longer in between washing. So this has been the most effective way for me to refresh my hairstyle, especially as someone who likes to work out pretty much every day. I work up a sweat pretty frequently, and so if I don't have some sort of dry shampoo or powder texturizer, it gets to be 
a pretty greasy mess really, really fast. So this helps prevent that. And what's so funny about it is when you look at the reviews on the Sephora website, it's like a mixed bag. There are so many people who do not like, really don't like this, like lots of one star reviews. This is maybe one of the only products that I can think of where people are so strongly, I mean, it's kind of half and half. People love it or they hate it, but where a lot of people hate it and it is just my absolute favorite. But yeah, that's my favorite dry shampoo in a nutshell. Then onto skincare, some fast favorites for me have been the Milk Matcha Cleanser and Toner. They initially sent me these, I don't even know how long ago, and I kind of picked them up in travel very early on in the year. And it wasn't until I tried them then that I realized, first of all, they're amazingly convenient for travel because obviously they're solid sticks. You don't have to try and cram them into your liquids bag. You can just kind of let them float frequently and not have to worry about them spilling on anything you have. So that's amazing. The cleanser has a light physical exfoliate like it has little granules or texture to it so that you you get a light exfoliation there as well in addition to the cleansing and then the toner I love I mean I live for toner when I do my skincare routine but I don't want to bring a liquid toner around so the matcha toner is perfect for that too I kind of discovered my love of them through travel and then just began adopting them into my everyday routine after the fact these are actually brand new I haven't repurchased them the brand actually in some of their press packages have just like slowly replenished my natural supply but I have gone through one of these each throughout the year of 2017 and even if they hadn't sent them I would have repurchased them because they are so so crucial to me um, not just from an everyday skincare standpoint but just from a travel standpoint especially and last is a body favorite and this is one that snuck in at the tail end of 2017 but it has seriously been a shower routine game changer for me I use it every time I shower I've already gone through one of these I've loved it so much and it is from the brand Perfectly Posh, which a girlfriend of mine sells, and it is a snarky bar. It's an exfoliating bar of soap, essentially, which smells amazing. They have a couple of different scents, of which I have purchased all of them, I think, because the first time, um, this was the first one I tried, the scent Faupology, and I've already gone through one of these bars and then proceeded to buy a couple more of these and other scents as well. Um, and I like it just because it is the, it's a method of exfoliation for my body that finally works for me. I've tried dry brushing, I've tried scrubs that come in tubs or scrubs that come in like squeezy tubes. And for some reason, it just feels like a loose exfoliant. I can't work in thoroughly enough to my skin. Dry brushing, I just always forget to do before I get in the shower. It's just, this has been the thing that I have found I can reliably remember to do and find the time to do on a daily basis. And some people might not care about exfoliating but as I talked about in the favorites video where I first mentioned this, I have KP or keratosis pilaris on the back of my arms, on my legs, really just anywhere where I experience some friction with my clothes. And this I have found has helped so much with eliminating that keratin buildup just by continuous and regular exfoliation. Plus there are moisturizing agents in here. So once you're done exfoliating, your skin isn't left feeling like totally raw and stripped. Although I do follow up with a good lotion. And again, it was kind of a late find, but once I found myself buying literally six bars I thought I, I don't think I can't I don't I think this is in favorites territory now right like how else do you define a favorite if it's not something that you plan on using every day for like the next year so yeah that's my last favorite guys I hope you enjoyed this video as always I would love to hear your favorites what have you been loving lately what has taken over your year of 2017 in terms of your beauty routine or otherwise let me know down in the comments below besides that thank you guys so much for watching thank you for another fantastic year here on YouTube I know I don't say it enough but it really means so so much to me that you guys take the time to watch and support me here on the channel so thank you again for that as well I hope you guys had a fantastic 2017 and we'll see you in 2018 actually you'll probably see me sooner because I'm sure this is not the last video I will upload this year <laughs> thank you guys again for watching I'll see you in the next video bye guys